Hey. So we're going to take a look at this dancing lady one because uh, Wasif Zaman, who is apparently uh, 17 years old, 16 years old. 16. Got some little youngins watching us tonight. It's YouTube, man. So let's take a look at this script written by a 16 year old. And I'm glad I know how old this person is because it reminds me to be nice. Is this the ballet one? Or yeah. Is... Okay. All right. How can we make this? So having read this through this before, we know that a ballerina is doing ballerina shit and then monsters pop in. Cool. And then it's a dream. So be my light. An opera plays a steady, sweet melody from a music box. And the reason I'm doing this is, if you're going to call attention to the beam of uh, the beam of light, use it in the next thing. Use it or lose it. A lithe, graceful ballerina. Here. Bam, right? Mm -hmm. You've already said she's graceful. Don't oversell it. She continues dancing for a minute, don't even care, don't even care. Blue stuff. The stage, white, uh, do, 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 color, morphs into a sickening shade of violet and yellow. Looks at ceiling. I don't think you need this, but whatever. This is so optional, it blows my mind, because ultimately, I don't really care about the lighting effects, even though that is cool and well-written. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need it. open ominous what's gonna happen next mm -hmm. okay this woman is overly described nails decorated with yellow flowers I imagine that's a plot point well I don't care if it's a uh, Wasif points out that it was supposed to be a black swan reference well I don't care like uh, what was the black swan reference the beam of light if you're going to use it, you know, you might as well connect it to the next shot. Because, you know, yeah. I'm not saying that's much better, but it's marginally better just because we've connected two ideas together. Yeah. <sighs> Rusty nails decorated with yellow flowers and black hair. A figure lurches in. She is a shadowy woman. Shadowy woman. Well, rather than a broken ballerina, in a filthy, torn, yeah, it's yellow flowers are not that creepy, because all it makes me think about is how are you going to do the extreme close-up on the flowers and... Yeah, it's just like an added shot. Yeah. And like, if you really want to me to explain why that's too much, she has yellow flowers on her nails, and on those flowers there are bees, and on the back of the bees there are aphids, and on the back of the aphids there's a tattoo in Sanskrit. Yeah, you, it becomes ridiculous. Yeah. Torn... Uh, what do you call a ballerina outfit? Tutu? Tutu. She moves in time with the music, but her body, but her walk is, is wrong. She moves at herky, jerky angles, like her limbs are broken. That's creepy. 
she comes closer. Greasy black hair obscures her face. She extends a corpse pale hand with long purple nails. The dissonance of purple and yellow was supposed to be like scary. I, I think, okay. <laughs> I, I feel like we could like uh, write that as a comedy bit. Like <laughs> the dissonance of purple and yellow were supposed to be scary. Like it, it, it's, it, it, I get it, but I, I, I don't. Her hair. The greasy black hair that obscures her face suddenly parts. Her mouth opens and a, and a horde of cockroaches pour out. And what we're doing here is we're just framing all this information mm -hmm. around what's truly scary. This is what we call the base reality girl on stage, inciting incident, oh, it's a dream. And then the meat of the scene, the second act of the scene, so to speak, is that this woman is fucking wrong and scary. Yeah. So clean up that imagery. Claire decides to do the smart thing and runs without asking questions, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, Claire... Screams and runs. Where would you scream and run if you were on a high school auditorium stage? Runs. Well, the witch monster is coming from yeah. the back door, right? So she doesn't want to run towards her. So I would say, like, into the wings. Runs to the wings, but she trips. A shadowy hand crosses her body. The silhouetted... See how in like half a page that's just a lot cleaner? Yeah. Given that you've written interesting shit, frame it on what's interesting. Don't put the filler. And it's not that you write too novel like because a lot of the shit I just put in is a little bit purple for my taste. But, um. Purple and yellow, perhaps? I hate you so much. Oh my god. Uh. It's a little bit purple for my taste, but I just wanted to give a taste of the style you're going for. The thing is, you were wasting your style on too many bits of information. Like, uh, the way I'd, I'd put it is, I'm a bad singer, right? But, um, you know, I can roughly carry a tune, and easy songs are easy to sing. Like, tequila is a wonderfully easy song. <laughs> tequila! Because you don't have to do that much work. Yeah. And if you want to do a simpler song, like, um, yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. You know, I'm roughly singing that on beat. You can at least identify roughly that I'm trying to sing. But if it was yesterday is a day that might happen, but it was far away and it feels emotionally, like the more syllables you put on, the harder it is to invest that with meaning. Yeah. And the same with writing. Given that you're working in this style, the more shit you put on the page, the harder it is for your gift to actually inflame it with interestingness. So by cutting out some of the space, you can really make every beat count. This is a lesson in saving your elements because otherwise it's unclear, in which case we get bored and we leave. Right. Which we did. You, you saw us earlier. If you watched the earlier segment of this, you can see us just not giving a shit and bailing. Or worse, the reader says, you know what? I don't need to read all this shit. I just got the gist. And they start skimming. You want to reward people for paying attention on every line. Right. <clears throat> Claire wakes up in her bedroom. She looks around her room. Nirvana posters, an artwork of ravens, blackbirds, kingfishers, and crows. Other birds, too, but they're all colored in black. I'm intrigued. 
She gets up out of bed, looks under her bed, and pulls out an old shoebox. We can hear the sound of pills. We never get a view of what's inside. What the fuck? Explain this line to me. I have no idea what this means. We never get a view of what's inside with her. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. This line makes absolutely no sense. Like, I guess it's she gets a box and we hear her opening some, I don't even, whatever. She wears a look of exhaustion that's coupled by determination surrounding whatever's in the box. Yeah, whatever. It reaches in. I mean, I feel like you could just cut the... Yeah, this is... The line, we never get the view of what's inside. Well, I get the feeling that's important. And uh, rather than look down at the box, Claire quickly dashes the box under her bed, a guilty look on her face. Because if it's illegal drugs in a box under her bed, she's going to behave as such. Yeah. Exterior school, front steps day. It's cloudy today. Um, I don't think you need this owl thing. Like, unless there's a really damn good reason for it. Otherwise, you're tying yeah. owls to birds. Claire, walking between the former placement of the... Oh, well, God. Mm. Yeah, I see what you're going for there. It's just... A visual. A little cutesy. Claire walks down the hallway. She's just another small fish in an expansive sea. I like that. That's yeah. very literary. Yeah. We hear a melancholic beats over this month. What the hell is a melancholic beat? Just like some chill, some chill music. Bump. Bump, bump. Bump. Yeah, whatever. Bump. All right, so she's bored a lot. I don't really care about any of this. Do you? Yeah, it's just a lot of walking around the school. I would consider all this as an optional information because edit format strikes. Yeah, I'm just. I mean, I feel like it shows that she's not interested in any subject, but I also feel like we. I kind of assumed that based on everything up to this point. She's lonely. I want to emphasize that. Um, mm, like she doesn't have any friends that she's talking to. You could make this more clear this way. Because otherwise, I'm not seeing lonely. I'm seeing bored. Yeah, same. And this is, becomes a clearer juxtaposition because you're showing everyone else pairing up. And if she's the only person walking alone, well, then the intent of that line becomes a lot more clear. We hear lots of noises, whatever. Claire's in her white in a, her white uniform. It's not a uniform. Two two. You want to read this? Yeah, the same one from the nightmare sequence in the beginning. She takes a sip from a canteen of water and puts the canteen back into her duffel bag. Quickly notice that deftly hidden to the left is the container of pills.
I don't want to think about it, Cantinas. Yeah. Yeah, Rose is actually a ballerina. Claire looks passively uh, around the people. Looks. We want to be clear. Other dancers mill around her. Happy, laughing, gossiping with her friends. Claire stands apart from them. Claire begins to shuffle her feet, moving her body side to side as if dancing with some mysterious lover. Oh my god, someone who actually cares about her, wants to be with her. Alright, that is an unfilmable. Yeah. That's one of those things that makes Unless, sense when you read it, but yeah. if you just see her doing that, you're not going to get her smell of Unless she, doing. she, an invisible phantasmal figure appears before her and she begins dancing with him, I don't know what's going on in her head. Mm-hmm. Given that Claire is already a little loopy, I would consider cutting this bit. Yeah, I'll show you. Here, I'm going to start shuffling around as if I'm dancing with someone. Alright, this is my abstract shuffle. This is my dancing by myself. And this is my dancing by myself as if I really want someone to be dancing with me. Notice how they all read the same on, uh, on, on screen. Rather than doing this crazy thing, um, watching, you can, watching them jealously. By framing exactly how Claire feels, you save this particular thing and you can save all the magic stuff for the nightmares. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice moves. Thank you. That's four years of salsa class. One of these days we'll do a full body thing. Show off my moves. Claire closes her eyes, still moving, yada yada yada. You really like describing all this magic shit. Um, I don't feel like reading that out loud. Do you f can you read that out loud without getting bored? Uh, well, it just seems like she's going into a dream state, or it's the drugs, which... If it's not, it gets a little confusing if she's doing drugs daydreaming and dreaming about mm -hmm. weird things. You might want to motivate this either off of the pills, like she takes a pill and then the world turns to magic. Yeah. Maybe she already did and that's what that last scene was hinting at, but Dream -like I wasn't ethereal. totally clear. So more shit happens. Rods of light form. Whale. Alright, so we're a page into this fantasy sequence. Alright, I do like that the shadowy woman returns. Yeah. Well, if it's pill-based, have her taking the pill with the bottle of water. Like, you, you go through all the... It is the pill. Okay. That makes more sense, yeah. I was just show her taking Claire it. drops to the floor. Everyone printed with an unregistered version of Faden. Shame on you. <laughs> Use writer do what it's easier. So Claire freaks out. Now she's in the nurse's office. Blonde girl. When blonde is feminine, it always has an E on the end. Claire? When Thatcher says Claire, the blonde smirks and raises an eyebrow. Not a mean look, just... I don't even think you need that. This is all optional. Here, take it easy. What happened? I think he fainted. How do you feel? Fine. Are you sure? I mean, I'm allowed to... Yeah, yeah, I'm doing alright. I must have been under too much stress or something, don't worry. I don't think you need this stuff. Yeah, you look pretty stressed. How long was I out? Only for about 15 minutes. You fell pretty hard. I feel fine. This isn't the first time. Alright, that's a weird line. And the reason why that's a weird line is I don't know what Claire wants. I'm not sure if she's playing it for sympathy or she wants to get back out there. Because... Alright, if you were before a huge performance, you've been practicing for weeks for this, yeah. and you black out, what would your first question be? You come to a nurse's office. Did I miss the show? Right. A, two. So, 
how long was I out is a good line because that's clear. But this isn't the first time. That makes it harder. Like, you know, you could do something as, I feel fine. I, I gotta get back before curtain. Yeah. It feels like, I'm just guessing here that Claire wants to get back on stage. Your mother sounded pretty shocked. You called my mom? Claire, relax. You don't understand. My mom always takes these things out of hand. You can cut neutral lines. Like, every, when you ever see something that you can connect the two lines, the other person's style input is not necessarily... Yeah, it's called parenting, Claire. But I mean, I have to rehearse. She doesn't have to rehearse, because she was just before a recital. Not looking like that, you're not. You have the darkest circles under your eyes. First I thought you were part raccoon, and then I figured drugs were involved. Yeah. Make make it clear. Claire, have you been taking drugs? Yeah, just get to it. Also, why is the blonde girl there? Yeah. I thought you were, have you been, or... There's an, a more graceful way to, uh, she, she, she sees... <clears throat> She's, she, Claire looks up, shit. She sees her bag in her office, open. You look through my bag? I don't think you need this line. I don't think you need this blonde at all. The point is, Claire, I didn't find anything, and I'm not going to sneak any further. You're clean, so just take it easy for a few days, okay? Well, even if she is her first friend, I don't understand why she's in the nurse's office and... In the, uh, in the first place. Like, Rose, have you ever seen a girl collapse at a dance recital? Mm-hmm. All right. Have, did anyone ever say, oh my gosh, this girl collapsed. We got to take her to the nurse's office. You, random girl, I need you to sit there and say snarky things so she can have a friend when she wakes up. Yeah, unless she's already in there waiting for something, but <clears throat> it is a little weird. Yeah, Claire should at least call it out, like, why are you here? <laughs> yeah, oh. as long as she calls it out, we could keep it. Marjorie here actually carried you all the way to the nurse's office. Isn't that mm -hmm. sweet? Yeah. Yeah, explain it. But I still want to know why she's there. Because... The way I would do it... Because then you can avoid all this shit and get straight to this. Yeah. Uh, so what's your, what's your name? It's Blair. Blair Smythe. Blair? That's funny. Yeah, I know, because your name's Claire. I get it. Yeah, because given that you've got a weird script where she's taking unnamed drugs. Yeah. You don't even know if that girl's really there. Right. So just the tripping. fact that she's there is interesting in a way you don't want it to be interesting because yeah. it's bullshit that she'd be there and given that you don't need her to say draconian authority or and whatever bullshit she says yeah you could just cut to outside secondary thing um what kind of illegal pills come in bottles i mean she could have just put them in an empty advil bottle or something nevertheless like a plastic like these are legal pills they come in a pharmacy bottle 
If I were to buy them illegally, they'd be in a Ziploc bag. Not that I would know that's this. True. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I also feel like that's easier to hide. <clears throat> yeah, so I don't understand why they're in a bottle, period. You know, I've watched you dance before. You're really good. Well, I mean, I don't think so. Too much choreography in this. I really like your backdrops. They belong in museums. Alright, how do we... Unless we see the blonde girl painting backdrops earlier. Well, here's a question. If you don't know much about ballet or about drugs, why are you writing about a ballerina who does drugs? <laughs> but, uh, you know, drug, drug 101. This is a legal bottle of pills. If I were to break some off and sell them to Rose, not that we would commit a Class 2 felony like that, but I would pour them in a Ziploc bag or a little piece of tin foil. Putting them in a bottle is weird because you're carrying around an illegal substance in the biggest, most conspicuous thing ever. You'd probably want it like folded up in tin foil and tucked away in a little sachet. Yeah. So, note to you. Right? Yeah. Also, <clears throat> Make it a clearer break for how long she's been out, because right now I don't know if she's rushing back to get on stage or not. Oh, thanks. They're not really that good. Oh, that's me. Okay. Lair becomes uncomfortable. Needs to bring up something. In I think I should just be straightforward here. I think you could actually cut all this. Yeah. Because it's much cooler if she's like, figured you need these. Yeah. <laughs> Nice reflexes. Killed it. Yeah, because it's like, I know your secret and I got your back, as opposed to, like, let's have this awkward conversation about not doing drugs, which yeah, also, shouldn't do, but... Yeah. I checked the date this was prescribed, and there should be way more tablets in there. Well, if it's prescribed and her name's on it, you don't need to hide it from Thatcher. Right. Like... This is a bottle of Adderall. It's got my name on it and the date it was prescribed. But, you know, all I really need is this bottle because this bottle protects me from a felony charge. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I were to peel off the label for some reason and then get pulled over, a cop could make my life very difficult. So the label is already kind of confusing. Yeah. Dropping some drug knowledge. Talking about drugs. That's what we do on YouTube. I don't care about politics. Anytime you need like backstory or any this much setup. Yeah. This stuff is pretty strong. I just please don't tell anyone. I, I won't, but you you, you... I, I lost my dad to drugs, okay? And I, I don't want that to happen to anyone. I mean, I know we don't know her anything, but please, please, just stop. that's corny. Yeah. I feel like <clears throat> it's a lot for somebody you've just met. Or, I mean, you could just shorten it. Like, I lost my dad to drugs, okay? Be cool. Yeah. Like, just something a little less wordy. I lost my dad to drugs, okay? Say I'm sorry if you're lost, but I know that doesn't do much. I lost my dad, too. I lost my dad to drugs, okay? Lost my dad, too. Happened a month ago. Stroke. Yeah, you see how it flows better without all those clauses? Yeah. And again, going back to my, it's easier to sing a short sentence than a long sentence. It's easier to act a short sentence than a long sentence. It's easier to cognate a short sentence than a long sentence. For example, my big problem in life, and the reason why I'm not a great communicator, I use sentences that are too elaborately constructed, contain too many commas and clauses, and too many words. The average human being has a Twitter-length attention span. If it's longer than a tweet, it's too long for their brain to remember the beginning of right when you read something that's got a lot of words it's like salt every one of those words is like a little kernel of grain of salt and um it's annoying and you can burn out the palate you can burn out the imagination you can burn out the attention span of, of a human being see i'm already Hello. talking too much <laughs> but in scripts in point <clears throat> shut up i value you i shouldn't be telling anyone to shut up <laughs> first month's always the worst i had to go to therapy are you uh, yeah. Um, 
I don't understand what are you. Yeah, I feel like she should just say, are you going? Or, what about you? Are you going? Well, you can always talk to me. Mm -hmm. It creates more emotion between the two characters. Yeah, I like that. Blair is trying to befriend Blair because they're bonding over their shared loss. Mm -hmm. Talking about the politics of whether or not therapy is for the weak. It just doesn't seem like the best use of your time. What's your price? <laughs> Flat rate of 40000 and more. That's cute. That's She's cute. Like, I, li I like that Blair's got a little something going on. They're having a little uh, witty banter. What can I say? Capitalism. I'm going to hold on to this. I think that you should make the uh, the drugs clearer. Like I know I I'm the one who made her throw it, but yeah, getting taking someone's pills away is not the best way to be someone's friend. Right. Like so, Claire is being way too cool about this. That's not realistic behavior. <coughs> See you tomorrow, Claire. Claire, for the first time, looks really happy. No, she doesn't, because this woman took her drugs away, <laughs> and that is not good. I mean, next time you're out with a girl, try looking through her purse without asking. That's about the look Claire would uh, give Blair upon yeah. having her shit messed with. And the secondary thing is, wait a minute, Blair, why were you looking through my purse in the first place? Yeah. I feel like... That wouldn't go down very well. Yeah, it's already kind of weird, and you're not calling attention to it. The box is filled with all sorts of prescriptions and bottles and pills. Well, if we... You said earlier we never see what's inside of it. Yeah. Like, rather, just make her a pill head from the get-go, because I don't understand why delaying this information. Right, because it's not like, oh, that's an antipsychotic or something. It's just like, yeah. she's doing a bunch of drugs for fun. <clears throat> They're all different. Like, we can see that. Some more dreams come in. The dancing lady comes in. She's creepy. Alright, so... We're... Sorry for being so late, but I couldn't decide what to wear. <laughs> Silly me. I'm sorry, what's going on? Dinner, remember? This is a dream. So what, beloved? I'm here, and so are you. That's all that matters. Who are you? You keep showing up with that freaky ghost thingy. What on earth are you talking about? I'm not really... I need to go. No, you need a drink. I'm sorry, but I have no idea who you are, and I don't want... Uh, when you say cadence of the script, I don't understand what you're talking about. Suddenly, I morph back. Yes, you do, you filthy <laughs> whore. Fair falls, crawling away, the dancing lady gets up. More composed now. Oh, my, I'm sorry, Claire. I didn't mean to do that. But why are you behaving that way? Come, my dearest. Come, back to my arms. Get away from me. Yeah, I feel like Claire is too freaked out by this thing to say, like, this freaky deaky. Like, she's talking, like, so millennial and hip. Yeah. I f yeah, I feel like she'd be too scared to say those kind of jokey things. Cut up all this. All this is cuttable. Peter Lang says possibly referring to the M dashes. I don't. I don't mind that. I mean, that just shows she's nervous, and uh, I'm glad you didn't parenthetically say nervous. Yeah. You can't run away from me, dearest. We belong together. Get away from me. I said, leave me alone. You can just cut out there. <clears throat> anyway, um, oh, let's do the one last scene. 
And Claire's awake again. She's sweating profusely, breathing hard. Claire puts a hand over her heart, slows her breathing. She gets out of bed and then on instinct reaches for the box under her bed before stopping herself. Nevermore. Claire is up and about, and she's actually smiling. Quite an... Don't need this. Claire sees Blair, book in one hand, peach in the other, sitting down at a nearby table. I like the fact that you uh, ran a nervous hand through her hair because you show that... Can we skip to the last act? Um, do we have time to... What the hell is the last act? Yeah, what page is that? Let's just go up to... <clears throat> Alright. So... Claire gets sick in the bathroom. Do, do, do. She mirrors, mirroring the beginning, beam of lice, light slicing blackness. Auditorium goes to purple and yellow. Mm. All right, it's growing on me, but uh, it's still not as scary as you perhaps think it is. Door slam open. Roaches fall from, back for more, beloved. Look, this relationship is over, got it? Oh, Claire. You're not the one who gets to decide that. This is wrong. I get that you're lonely, but... No, you're the lonely one, sweetie. None of them get it. We belong with each other, Claire. And if you're not convinced, I'll show you, dearest. So shit happens, scary stuff. Um, I think you can cut this line, because I don't feel like reading it. Whenever I don't feel like reading something, that's usually a good sign of cuttable. Yeah. Um, also, this is a good, uh, you should always try and read your script aloud into a tape recorder. Every time you read a scene, I guarantee you, you will not be able to get through it because it will find something that annoys you so much, you'll stop writing and re-record. Re <clears throat> yeah, it really helps just to hear it out loud. So more shit happens, choreography. No! The dancing lady points a hand at Claire, Claire stops, her breathing gets cut off, shadowed hand from earlier infects Claire's system, almost turning her eyes black, all hope is lost until... Never again. Claire shines brighter, expelling the shadowed hand and the blackness from her eyes. The lady hisses in desperation, black tears streaming down her face. No, I belong with you. Can't you hear me? I'm the one you need, Claire. I don't love the dancing lady's character. Like, she's freaky, but uh, her lines are a little bit goofy. Yeah. They're kinda... None of them get it. Not your dead, dickless dad. Not your stupid mom. Not that little bitch in the nurse's office. I love you, Claire. Why can't you love me? Like I'm, I'm not reading it very well, but like it's, it, it it's not a line that forces me to go into a, a, a freaky it, monster. It doesn't. It makes her less frightening, I think, because she's just like so needy. Yeah. <laughs> Advice for um, the love lorn out there. <laughs> there you go. I know how you feel. I just. Why can't you love me back? We can't be together. You're keeping me away from my life. You have no life. You're nothing without. Yeah, you've, it's clearly not going to work. Like you need to keep raising yeah, the stakes here. It's not getting the hint. Then I'll kill that stupid whore who's right in front of you. See, that's a that's a that's a manly line. I got. Yeah, I like that. Dancing lady charges at Claire with another bone. Th 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 this head. threat would make a lot more sense if the stupid whore was actually there. Then I'll kill the woman who's abstractly in your heart right now, but in a different room. Yeah. That's my threat. Grrr. Kind of goofy. So anyway, Claire hugs the dancing lady to death. Yeah. I know how much it hurts. Trust me when I tell you hugs help a lot. I don't mind that. This is a very, very corny script, but you're young. Um, I feel like this is a very long walk to go for the metaphor of killing your depression. I also know that if I was your age, I would have been proud to have written something this cogent. And I feel like that if you were to show this in an English class, you'd uh, rightly get applauded because you've taken a very clear metaphor and expressed it through the lens of a horror film. Yeah. But I'm just saying that to my cynical, jaded um, old eyes, you know, this is a little on the nose. It's good, and I'm impressed that you were able to write this cogently and have this much of an idea for it. 
But um, 18 pages is a long walk to read some kid's uh, thoughts on depression. I feel like you could definitely do this in 10 or less. Yeah, because I'm wondering what we missed from the last scene we read to this one. And it feels it like we could have just skipped right doesn't to matter. this. Yeah. Being with you hurts me more than you know. I, I was in a bad this... place and you tried to help me. Don't think we need this. So anyway, the dancing lady holds her breath. I feel like this twist would make a lot more because this is what happens here. Yeah. This twist would be like shocking in a Twilight Zone, but in this, the Year of Our Lord 2016, it's just not enough. I don't necessarily care about. So, anyway, shit happens. You know my name, and eventually she wakes up and goes through the shoebox and flushes the drugs, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just too much coda. I can type, I swear, this keyboard is just... <laughs> I was like, what's going on there, Matt? A sad, fond look on her face. Leave me alone, I'm on drugs. So anyway... Everything after this is Coda. There you are. Am I on drugs? No, I sadly I am not. <laughs> If anyone's in the LA area and has any Molly, we can talk. <laughs> but all this is Coda, and um, boom. So, I like it. I think you've genuinely achieved something special, which is a coherent story that takes a metaphor for depression and puts it in the cinematic language of a horror movie. I kind of feel like you're doing this well, and I think you're, if you submitted this to an English teacher, you would be rightly praised for being a very promising writer. And um, now it's about taking an idea like this and making it a little bit more distinct. Um, thank you, Michael. Uh, according to the arcade games I played in my youth, winners don't use drugs. But then I look at the Oscars, and I think that advice was clearly <laughs> broken in some respect. Um, yeah. Over and beyond this, I feel like this is competent, and again, you're young, so I feel like I'm being a dick right now. But don't be comfortable with this level of competence, because if I were to, say, give this to a bunch of talented writers and say, write a horror story about a ghostly woman who's a metaphor for addiction or depression or something, mm -hmm. they'd all turn out something like this. And I'm looking uh, for something special about you. You know, like, um, what I like is little bits like the cockroaches pop out of her mouth. So when she dies, I'd love to see, like, a final eruption of cockroaches. Mm -hmm. Given that this is essentially a pro forma script, um, you know, like, it's competent, but it's the kind of thing that other competent writers could have turned out. An exercise I like to recommend is, imagine if, um, imagine if Quentin Tarantino was writing this. Or imagine if, um, who's the one who did that? Guillermo del Toro was writing this. Or imagine if Clive Barker was writing this. I've heard that you never really sell a script, you sell yourself. 
Uh, that was on Reddit today. Sure, whatever. But what I am interested in is what's special about your imagination? You know, that song on yourself. If you maybe you're right. If you're Guillermo del Toro, a young Guillermo del, del Toro, and you had the monster with the eye hands, that would be such a shocking image. I'd be like, wow. Yeah. But given that uh, you're, you haven't created that, I'd like to see something more specific. Like I, I don't know. Like maybe you could study old films of ballet dancers and find things that are creepy there. And just have her menace Claire with weird ballet specifics, mm -hmm. right? Because imagine this. Imagine if someday you got famous for whatever reason, exactly writing like this. And I gave this exercise. I said, write like Tarantino. They would, you know, write something with a lot of blood and, you know, like the N-word and like a lot of hip, you know, cool dialogue. Mm -hmm. Or I've said uh, Rodriguez, which would be a little bit like Tarantino, but, you know, like a like Southwest flavor. Yeah. Or like Nancy Myers, which would be like, oh, don't you know I'm so wealthy, but uh, a girl's got to have time for love. Mm -hmm. And then I said, write like Wasif Zaman. At present, it would be very difficult to mimic your style. There's not much that's present there. So ask yourself, what is special about me, Wasif? What do I bring to the table, and how can I make my style a little cleaner? Because mm -hmm. right now, this is a good generic exploration of the genre. We once read one called Slender Man, which was you know, similar. Mm -hmm. Very competent. Like it. You got some chops, kid. Good for you. But where's your voice? What's special about the way you're telling the story? Yeah. Because I like that you've taken the risk of going with ballet stuff and drug stuff when neither of those is your cup of tea. But you haven't used the drugs nor the ballet imagery to really sell your monster better. Mm -hmm. So introspective. So anyway, we're going to wind this down. Uh, I'll give uh, Old Wasif about 30 seconds to get these, uh, ask any last questions. Uh, if anyone's still watching this, thank you for watching. This is what I do all day. <laughs> I'm offering a special on Skypes, uh, $10 off an hour consultation. I genuinely love doing Skypes. It's the most helpful way to spend money. Oh, yeah. And, um... Rose, any final thoughts? What are you up to today? Uh, you know, just keeping it real. I get some dinner. Got to go clean the apartment. Just moved. Moving is literally the worst thing in the world. Divorce, moving, and death are the three most stressful things in the world. Well, it seems like Fact. Wasif uh, was helped. I, I'm glad that uh, you uh, were in some way ennobled by this. Yeah, good job. Joseph, sorry you missed this. Uh, feel free to follow my Twitter. It's down there so you can never miss a broadcast again. And uh, talk to me on Twitter. I, I love uh, getting uh, comments, and uh, I love reading material. So if you have anything you'd like looked at in private, you can hire me. Go to thestorycoach.net. Or if you'd like to submit it in public, uh, direct message me, and I'll, I'll tell you how you can send the material. These assholes will read it on the internet for That's everyone correct. to listen Joseph to. Joseph Guinness says, never use Twitter. Well, then you're going to miss a lot of timely events. What can I say? It's a social media environment. Anyway, until next time, I'm Matt. This is Rose, and thank you for watching. We love you.